Hello everyone. So it has been quite some time since I last produced and shared any films here on the platform www.youtube.com. I have been incredibly busy for the last two weeks and last week in particularly I had the most tremendously agonizing toothache, which is so strange. I have a new tooth growing in, which is so very strange. You'd think after 24,000 years of immortal life that all of my teeth would have grown in by now. It seems not. So we have a new tooth. A new friend has come to the party. Unfortunately not by the drawing room but via my gum. And in today's film I'm actually going to create quite a winged eye, but not an elongated winged eye, something that is quite outward and pulls the eyes apart. I actually wanted to look very feminine evil, so I wanted to look quite super villain and a little bit editorial. Now I have already gone in and applied some primer, foundation, colour corrector, concealer, setting powder and eyebrows. I first of all went in with some of Bobbi Brown's vitamin enriched face base and applied it liberally to the skin. For foundation I applied some of of Kat Von D's Locket Foundation in the shade Light 41 Neutral. To conceal my neon sapphire under eye discoloration, I applied some of Cryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D1W. And to conceal and brighten areas, I then went in and applied some of MAC Cosmetics Full Coverage Foundation in the shade W10. And to set all of that through, I took some loose powder. This one is by Cryolan, and this is their translucent powder in the shade TL3. For eyebrows, I took some of Cryolan's Dermacolor Cream Concealer in the shade D40, and stenciled out a shape first of all. Then I went in and applied some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso and applied quite a dense amount of that in little flicking motions just to imitate the appearance of hair. It also serves to set the D40 concealer for which that we used to stencil out the eyebrow shape. And then in the brow area, just to reduce any redness, I then went in with some of MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shade Shivering White. And I have employed a very full coverage base today, as just the other day I extracted quite a lot of hair on my face with a method that I use very regularly. However, because I hadn't done it in quite a while, it's left my chin area in particular appearing slightly like a petrified sea urchin. So I do so indeed apologize if my chin area is looking quite sandpapery. Now, first of all, I'm going to go in and quickly swipe over the eyelids just to mat down any moisture that might still be on the lids and to tint the color just ever so slightly. Using some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Brulee, I do tend to use this in almost every look for this very purpose. I'm just sweeping that across the eyelid first of all. And I'm just applying that over the eyelids in a sweeping like motion with a Zova 228 brush. You don't really have to be neat with this at all. And certainly if you're somebody with a deeper skin tone, just go for a shade that is almost matching your skin tone, just a tiny fraction darker, as this brulee colour is ever so slightly darker than my natural skin tone. It's just a way of blanking out the eyelid and just swooping it out ever so slightly. And for this look, I'm going to be keeping the majority of the look quite low. So I'm not going to be taking it too far into the eye socket or upward. I'm actually going to take it more outward, but I will be coloring this area just ever so slightly, just so that it's not such a stark, blank area because it can make the eyes look quite bald actually, particularly if your skin is as light as mine and you've applied quite a lot of makeup here and then there's this giant section that's colourless. It can make that area look a little bit bald. So I will tint it just so that there's a slight hue and it doesn't look so stark because by the very nature of the shape for which that I'm going to be going for with the eyeshadow, it will emphasize that area greatly. At this point, I'm only going to be sketching in colors. I'm not actually going to be packing on any substantial color at this point. Now I'm going to go in and intensify the look with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Omega, which I trust for my regular viewers is no surprise. And what I'm doing with that, first of all, is just packing it on. And as you can see, I'm not actually applying it in the eye socket. I'm almost applying it right on the outside. What I want to do, first of all, is just very faintly sketch in the kind of shape that I want to go for today. And because I'm going for quite a long outward shape, not elongated outward, just outward, a great way of seeing this is by actually tilting your head back just ever so slightly. So then you can actually follow the lower waterline outward. Always look at your own eyes as a map. Nature was very smart. And then I'm just taking into the socket just ever so slightly and I'm only taking it in as far as the outer corner. So if we imagine a line up from the outer corner, that's as far as I'll be taking it in. And I've been applying this on a MAC Cosmetics 217. And then I'm just going in and ensuring that all of that is seamless with a Kidstar's N31 Tapered Blender Brush. Even though it seems a little daft to be going in and blending and buffing at this point when we've applied hardly any product, it 
does ensure seamlessness. If you feel as if the color has gone a little bit patchy, you can always go back in with the brush for which that we used to apply the brulee color and just sweep over everything as it will mute down the omega shade just ever so slightly. And I'm just going to begin to intensify that outward. And we're almost following the natural temple shape. So it's kind of going outward, but we're not taking it outward. I'm going back in and ensuring seamlessness. And with the same Omega color, I'm going to be applying that to the lower part of the eye quite substantially on a Kevin O'Quinn small eyeshadow soft round tip brush. I'm going to take it quite far into the inner corner. And this is where having hooded eyes is really useful for creating a look like this because there's going to be a predominance of the color on the underneath of the eye and on the outside of the eye. You don't really need to bother with the eyelid that much, not at this point anyway, but you will be able to see what I mean when I tilt my head down. Of course, it's more obvious because I have hooded eyes. When I tilt my head down, you can see that there is this big section here that's just blank and very white looking. So it will need a little bit of a hue just so that it doesn't seem so stark, but we're going to add that in at a later point. And I'm just building that Omega color up on the underneath. And I'm going back in with my MAC 217 and applying a little bit more of that to the outer part of the eye, bringing it out. And this technique can actually be really fantastic if you have hooded eyes or if you are somebody that has hooded eyes, because as you can see, I have not applied any color into my socket, only at the outer part and on the underneath. And if I turn slightly, it creates the illusion of having a much more pronounced socket and crease. I think with hooded eyes, there's always this presumption that you must sort of work on the top. Sometimes you can create the illusion of a much more open eye when your eyes are hooded by working on the underneath. I'm applying some more of that Omega to the underneath and just softening the edges. And I'm really pulling the color down now because when I applied the underneath, it just made the eye look very winged. So I'm taking the color and I'm pulling it outward and downward. So with the Omega applied, I'm now going to go in and apply a gray eyeshadow to the eyelids first of all, just as our base color on the eyelid itself. And the gray tone that I'm going to be using is this gray tone right here, which is Inglot's Powder Eyeshadow in the shade 349. And I'm just packing that onto the eyelid first of all with a MAC Cosmetics 239 brush. It's coating the entire eyelid all the way up to the crease, slightly into the inner corner. And then going back in with our 217 from before, with our Omega and just ensure seamlessness. But I'm not creating too much of a shape or a socket, I'm just softening the edges of it. Now I want the look to be quite smoky and a little bit grungy and a little bit messy. So I'm going to further intensify just the outside of the eye and onto the lash line itself, just ever so slightly, with a darker shade of grey. And I'm going to be taking this just ever so slightly darker shade of grey, very similar to Inglot's Powder Eyeshadow in the shade 349. This one, however, is slightly darker, and it is Inglot's Powder Eyeshadow in the shade 348. We shall presume it to be its slightly darker sister. And I'm actually going to stipple that on, first of all, with a MAC 217, just at the outer corner, but not taking it into the socket. And I'm just taking that grey tone and just pulling it down into our outward flick, intensifying it. Then I'm taking a clean Zoba 228 brush and just blending over everything just to ensure seamlessness. Now one clever trick when you have made your eyeshadow far too severe is to go in with a powder foundation and apply it against the eyeshadow. And I've just done a little bit of that just here. And I went in with some of MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shade NW10 and apply quite a large amount of it just at first. And it just mutes everything down if it's too strong. As you can see on the side that I haven't powdered down, it's far too severe. So I'm just taking it down just ever so slightly. And also by going in with powder foundation, it creates a much more seamless gradient. And I'm not applying that on top, I'm applying it against. And then I'm going in with a clean Zova 228 brush, and just buffing over all of that. And I always find that little trick to work marvelously. So I was getting to the point where I was thinking the look was going to go drastically wrong. Powder is one of those wonderful products, whether it is a loose powder, a translucent powder, pressed powder or a powder foundation. Not only is it great for setting or building coverage, it can actually tame down and mute down things that you may want to mute down. So if your blusher or your contour is far too strong, sometimes going over it with a little bit of translucent powder will mute it down. That is certainly a technique that I've used within many of my films. And even though the shades for which that I used to create the outward wing were more warm than what is appearing now, when you go over things with a powder foundation that might have substantial coverage, 
coverage, it can sometimes make the eyeshadow that you've applied look ashy. And in this event, that works to our advantage as it has just made the look so smoky and seamless. Now to intensify the eyes, I'm going to be taking MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Espresso. And I've already used this on my eyebrows today, but I'm going to be using this shade today just to intensify the eye. And I'm applying it first of all to the underneath of the eyes using a Kidstar's N33 Micro Pencil Brush. And I'm going to build up a bigger concentration of the color at the outer part. So it pulls the eye and the look outward. What I mean by that is when you apply your strokes or if you're smoking it in, you're doing it in one consistent line, but then at the outer part where you want to drag it out, you make the line fatter. And instead of applying the brush in one place, you pull it out just ever so slightly. And I'm just taking it just outward, just ever so slightly. I'm going back in with our Kevin O'Kine brush just to smoke it out. And then I'm just pulling the color across the upper lash line to about midway into the eye. With the espresso applied, I'm now going to go in with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Eyeshadow in the shade Carbon. And I'm only going to be pushing that into the lash line just to intensify the depth. And to do so, I'm using a NARS number no. two brush. And then I'm just taking it into the inner corner just very, very faintly. I don't want it to be too much. And then I'm just going to smudge it with a MAC 219 brush. And then going back in with our Kidstar's N33 Micro Pencil Brush, I'm just smoking some of that carbon along the upper lash line. Now I actually really like how grabby the eye is looking. I think it looks quite grungy. It's quite rock and roll and it's a little bit super villain. Now even though I said I wasn't going to go for a socket, when I'm blinking, I'm actually seeing something that I think would look absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to go back in with our MAC Cosmetics 219 brush. With some of our medium dark tone from before, our Inglot's powder eyeshadow in the shade 348. What I'm going to do is just slowly, taking hardly any product, map a socket very faintly, just so that it looks like a fold. And one of the best ways to do this is just to tilt your head back just ever so slightly and draw around. Now to finalize the eye, I'm going to be taking Topshop's powder eyeshadow in the shade Silver Fox. And I'm just applying that on a clean MAC 239 brush. I'm just taking it all over the lid, building up the sheen. And then going back in with our 217 from before, and I'm just quite crudely applying it. I don't want it to be too neat. And go back in with our 217 and just buff the edges of it. Now I'm going to go in and curl the eyelashes using some of Inglot's eyelash curlers. Now for mascara, I'm going to go in with a trusted favorite of mine, the Balm's What's Your Type? And I'm applying a liberal amount of that. I always find mascara works wonders. It never fails me with its capacity just to fix absolutely everything. And for contour, I'm going to be using our light grey tone from before, which was Inklot's powder eyeshadow in the shade 349. And I am applying it on a Real Techniques 300 brush. This brush is actually very well engineered for this purpose because you can just prod it at the back of the cheekbone. And when I don't wish to disturb the formation of the foundation for which that I've applied, I like to just stipple it on, flicking it upward just very gently. Because our eye shape is quite straight, I don't want to make our contour too straight as well. I'm going to make it quite round. I think with a straight contour in combination with a very straight eye, I think the combination of strong lines would make my face appear like a dual carriageway. And then I'm just going in with an e.l.f. small tapered brush and I'm going back in with some of our MAC Cosmetics Studio Fix Powder Foundation in the shade Shivering White just to brighten underneath the eyes. For blusher, no surprise to my very regular viewers, I'm going to be taking some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Blusher in the shade Blush Baby. And I'm applying it with the same brush for which that I used to contour today. Very lightly dusting it on. And I'm going to make it quite strong and quite high. To have skin that looks expensive, it has to be seamless. So with blusher, even though it looks like I'm applying it absolutely everywhere, I'm applying it absolutely everywhere, but a very faint amount of it. But concentrating the majority of the color in one area, but just going over all the other areas very, very lightly, just to ensure seamlessness. I think when it comes to blusher, it is best looking when you cannot see where it starts or stops, but it certainly has a presence. To highlight, I'm going to be going in with Becca's Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in the shade Pearl. And I'm applying this with a Charles Fox 8146015 brush. I don't actually like to apply a highlighter with brushes this specific. I much prefer big fat blusher brushes for applying highlighter, as I like to get highlighter absolutely everywhere. I like to glow greater than the gods. And I'm just applying a liberal amount of that, tiny bit of it to the bridge of the nose, a little bit of it at the beginning of the forehead. As I have quite a producer brow bone, and I do tend to find that if I just raise that area just ever so slightly, it makes me look a little less Neanderthal. Slight amount of it on the forehead, 
a tiny bit of it on the chin. And then I'm taking a slight amount of that highlighter to the inner corner, just to highlight, blend it with the Kidstars N30 Small Tapered Blender. Now I'm going to add a slight hue through the socket and down the sides of the nose. This is something that I do very seldomly. I probably only do this about every 5,000 years. I'm going to be going in with some of MAC Cosmetics Powder Bronzer in the shade matte bronze. As you can see, this is thoroughly loved and used. I use it a lot within my kit. I have gone through many of these over time. And I'm going to be applying that on an Inglot 6SS brush. And I'm just taking that from the eye socket down the side of the nose just ever so slightly. Not all the way to the tip, but just on the side there, as I felt it required just a tiny bit of warmth. And as I said before, I just want to adjust the hue over this area so it doesn't seem so bleak and bold looking. So this will help us just build a slight hue. This can actually slim the nose ever so slightly. Now, when it comes to my nose, thinness is not an issue. It's more of an issue of size and scale in my case. It has been playing on my conscience quite a lot lately that I should probably install a lighthouse in case any ships crash into it. Now for lips, I was going to go for a sensible option like a nude. I thought I'll go for a nice sensible option like a nude. And I'm usually very sensible. I'm more sensible than a box of porridge. So today I want to go for a bright red. And I'm going to be applying some of MAC Cosmetics lipstick in the shade Lady Danger, which is this absolutely beautiful bright orangey red shade. I'm so excited. And I'm applying this directly from the bullet first of all, because with red lips, I much prefer to apply the majority of the color first so then I can go in and line rather than lining first of all, because red can look so awful if it's not neat. I much prefer to do this method first of all and then go in and make the corrections. So that's the Lady Danger rather crudely applied. To line the lips and correct the shape I'm going to be going in with some of Illamasqua's pencil in the shade Spell and I'm just going to go in and correct all of those edges. And just to finalise the lips I'm just dabbing on a little bit more of that Lady Danger. I've always found great longevity with the MAC Cosmetics matte lipsticks and I definitely think this really bright orangey red colour finishes off the look fantastically. The overall look turned out a little bit differently to what I had planned in the beginning, but I'm really happy with the end result. I hope that you have found today's film to be either interesting, useful, helpful or beneficial. Once again, thank you so much for watching and of course, take care. Bye!